So, what's inside this supple box? So fair warning, this video is only gonna be tangentially related to cycling. If you follow us on Instagram, you know I have taken the deep dive into watercolors. It's a great activity to do during the winter when it's just cold. So today I'm gonna share with you what is inside this Peshat box, what a Peshat box is, and share some of the tools that I've been using and enjoying as well as some of the pictures I've been creating uh, the last couple months with watercolor. So with that, let's move on to the talking hand camera. What is a Peshat box? Well, it's derived from the a French word, which I'm not quite sure how to pronounce. I'm sure someone will correct me uh, for Peshat, and it means sketch. So it's essentially a portable um, painting sketchbook and they come in various sizes uh, this is by a brand called uh, gorilla painters and this is the six by eight size they make a smaller one if you can believe it that's five by seven and much larger ones and typically these are uh, used primarily by oil and acrylic painters although i've repurposed this one for watercolor and what it is basically is a nifty easel and storage space for your art supplies you put you know, whatever art board or piece of paper that you're using in this kind of designated spot. The way I use it for watercolor is I have these uh, six by eight canvas boards on which I tape in individual pre-cut sheets of watercolor paper and slip it in there. It's got a hinge that lets you adjust the angle. Typically for water, water paper, you want it, you want a slight angle, definitely um, more laid back than an oil painter or acrylic painter would use. Uh, just so the water just doesn't run down the page. In this box, there is this sliding compartment here that can carry some art supplies. Um, I've kind of modified mine already. I put uh, some magnets on here and a little clip here. This is where I'll put in some paper towels uh, to help dry the brush. Other things I have in here is a assortment of uh, travel brushes. These are mostly a Skoda and a Da Vinci Maestro Kalinske hair. I've also got a bunch of different pencils, um, various widths for uh, doing the pencil sketch, some paints that I use a lot of, eraser. Another thing I've done to this box <clears throat> is I put some, uh, whoops, I put some Velcro strips here. And what this does is uh, I can take this cute little mason jar, which has another, the other end of the Velcro strip, and that goes in there. So when I have water, you know, it's, not gonna tip over by accident. So if you're an oil painter, this is uh, where your oils go onto. This is the palette. But as a watercolor painter, I just use it as a surface to, to rest the actual palette on. This is the Whiskey Painters um, Enamel Metal Palette. And what's nice about this is that it's got some good weight. Um, this is a, a white enamel surface. So when you get it right out of the box, the paint doesn't beat up. It really spreads out and you can see what you're mixing. A uh, downside is if you do use uh, Watercolor paints with a high staining strength, like a phthalo color, it is gonna stain. Um, as much as I wipe this, it already has like kind of a green tint to it, but that's because of some of the various paints. Uh, so it's got magnets. This is metallic. So that slaps onto there and it holds it in place. So this is the pretty, I wouldn't call it basic kit, but what I usually paint with. You'll notice because of the dimensions of the box, you're kind of confined to painting things that are six by eight or smaller. Um, I have found a workaround uh, to work on larger pieces, uh, which I'll show you right now. All right, so this is a 11 by 14, I believe, illustration board and a nine by 12 uh, watercolor sheet on it. So when I uh, work on something this, this large, what I usually do is just uh, forgo using the clips there and laying it like so. And it actually works pretty well in a, in a home setting. This probably wouldn't be the most stable, like if this were on a tripod in the plein air setting, but at home or um, at a desk or something, uh, it works pretty well. Another configuration I use this is uh, if I have the real estate, I'll just lean it, I'll prop it up against there. So super stable that way and just have this off to uh, the side. Okay, so in terms of paints, um, I actually work with a pretty limited palette here. There's a, only kind of a handful of colors and some of them are duplicates, just different brands. Uh, mostly Daniel Smith and uh, M. Graham and uh, Windsor Newton. Aside from these great travel brushes, which are awesome, um, 
I like the uh, Escoda Perla. They tend to hold a little bit more water than the Escoda Versatil. Okay, so these are some of the uh, other uh, brushes that I use a lot of. Uh, if I'm traveling really light and just am taking a sketchbook and leaving the, the box behind, uh, I'll use a water brush. This one works pretty well. I think it's um, the, the Niji one. Another kind of uh, mechanical pencil I like is actually this uh, Stetler uh, Mars Technico uh, lead holder. So this holds a two millimeter lead. It's got a built-in um, lead sharpener, if you will. And one advantage of using something like this is that uh, the lead lasts a really long time. And since it is thicker, um, it won't break the tip off as often. And you can also sh shade with the side if you want. So a little bit more versatile than a straight mechanical pencil. Uh, you can retract the lead completely and this becomes a uh, pocket safe so it's not stabbing you in the thigh. These are kind of my bread and butter brushes at the moment. I love this uh, Da Vinci size 2 uh, mop brush. It's a squirrel. It's fairly affordable for a mop brush and it's great for uh, laying down the, the, the underpainting on a watercolor, especially if you work in smaller sizes like 4x6, 5x7, uh, 6x9. I also have an assortment of these Raphael uh, synthetic brushes. Uh, this holds a little bit less water, uh, so two great brushes. I've been recently experimenting with this super cheap uh, Sumi brush. I uh, would not recommend this particular one, but I am intrigued uh, by these brushes in general because it's really easy to create a dry brush effect and use this for uh, big washes. In comparison to a uh, squirrel brush, way cheaper. So I also have a, a bunch of different um, detail brushes. These are riggers of various length. Um, this one's a super cheap one I, I picked up from Michael's. It actually works really well for grass. Um, this one, you can see it's got a funny shape. It's got kind of a reservoir here. Uh, so it holds a lot more paint than the other ones and it's good for kind of long varying width lines. And this one I use a, a ton. Super tiny, and uh, usually I use this with white gouache to put highlights on figures and kind of just dab it on. So that's the Peshat box. I'm hoping to take this with me actually on bike when the weather clears up and do some more painting outside. Uh, do you need all this stuff to make good paintings? Of course not. I started out really simply, but as you guys know, I'm kind of an obsessive and once I jump down a rabbit hole, I go down deep. I think if you want to get into watercolors uh, without spending a, a ton of money, I would go with something like this. Um, these uh, Pentalic Aquabooks are awesome. They come in many sizes, uh, super affordable. And something like this Winsor Newton uh, Pocket Sketcher works great. Combine that with the water brush and you're basically good to go. I think this would be a good place to start. Um, if you want to move up someplace in between this and this setup I have, then I would say get this kit of paints. This is Daniel Smith. There are this quality. So that means the colors are way more intense, highly pigmented. Uh, they blend and they mix beautifully. Um, so these are six individual tubes and you'll need an empty palette. And this is a cheapy one from Amazon. It's by Medin. It's not as nice as the Whiskey Painter ones. It's a little bit lighter. When you initially use this, the paint, the watercolors will beat up until you wear it in. It's a cheap, it's a good middle of the road option. You can do amazing paintings with any of these kits. You don't need a Peshat box, but for those of you that are interested, you know, there are definitely lots of different ways uh, you can create art on the go on your bike from a, a little more <laughs> complicated and heavy to uh, way simpler solutions. So that's it for this video. I hope you guys found it interesting, especially if this channel has inspired you to get into creating some art on your own uh, while bike touring or bike traveling. And just a quick note, a lot of those paintings I showed on the video are for sale. Uh, check out the Big Cartel link uh, below. It's pretty easy, pathlesspel.bigcartel.com. I am gonna do a run of printed postcards from some of the images. Uh, just to give a little bit more affordable option. But if you want an original, act quickly before it gets purchased because it's an original and there's only one of those. So that's it for this video. Uh, hope you enjoyed it. Like, share, subscribe. And as always, keep the supple side down.